prepare the way, and I hope that you're preparing the way in your heart for our anointing service. We do this uh, usually the last Sunday of January, the, the month of Genesis for the year, the beginning. And it's not that we can't pray for you and anoint you with oil, but um, we just wanted to focus corporately this morning on what we feel God's saying. If you would turn in your Bibles, please, to Matthew 10. We're going to look at verses 1 to 8. I have another scripture, so we'll see how that goes as far as getting through things. Praise the Lord. Now, Carol, all those ladies that are invited to come to the tea, and you're going to have teacups and tea and fellowship and just bringing the ladies together. And so, ladies, um, gentlemen, you cannot come to that. Because you cannot drink tea with your little pinky out like that. I, I, that's probably the main reason. But I'm going to need somebody for security for that night because we're doing it in the evening. So if one of you brothers would like to be here for security, I'm sure that they will probably throw a couple of biscuits or cookies your way. If uh, So if you want to be security that night. Matthew, go ahead, Carol. Man, wow. Does this mean that the men will want to barbecue and be treated like kings probably in a couple months? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's look at uh, Matthew 10. If you'll stand with me, please. If we stand to read the Word of God together. Verse 1, Matthew 10. And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, uh, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Lebaeus, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And verse 7, And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Can you say amen? You can be seated. Jesus called 12 disciples. Notice he said they were disciples before there was the names of the apostles. That's very important for you to see this morning. They were just common folk like you and I. Fishermen, tax collectors, you know, these were just uh, regular people. And Jesus called these 12 men. And Jesus called them, and I want to say this, and this is important. Jesus has called you. Jesus has called you. It says that he commissioned them and gave them power and authority. Write those two words on the back of your bulletin or if you have a piece of paper. He gave them power and he gave them authority. It was the power of the Holy Spirit and it was in the authority within the name of Jesus as representing him. That has not been rescinded. He gave it to the twelve. He's given it to us. He, he did not look at their looks. He did not look at their education. He did not look at what sex they were. He did not look on their charisma. That had nothing to do with Jesus' anointing, a power and authority over their lives. To do what Jesus does, now think of it for a minute, to do what Jesus does, we need to understand what he says we can do, we can do. And a lot of times when we look at the word of God, we think, well, that's great history. But how does it apply to me in 2019 in Lake Elsinore, California? It has the same authority, the same calling, because this is the call for every believer of Jesus Christ. 
So if you ever start looking at the Bible and you start disqualifying yourself, don't. Because God has qualified you. I want to say it again. The Lord has qualified all of you to be used in His name. I remember seeing a video, maybe you've seen it, of just a guy that came in was going to rob, I guess, like a liquor store or someplace. And this lady stood there and said, in the name of Jesus, leave. She didn't shout. She didn't get mad. She just said, in the name of Jesus, leave. And you watch this man. Because something was happening to that man that he came up against an authority. All she was, maybe could have been just a little housewife, maybe a little mother in the church. She could have been one of our children. In the name of Jesus, leave. He left. Most people would have just been, whatever you want, here, take this, take that. Take the ring, take the purse, take everything. Take the cash register, take it all. But she stood her ground. And it just goes to show you it works. I bet she was praying for that man. Not only not to shoot her or whatever, but I bet she was praying for that man's soul. Think about it. What Jesus has called us to do, what he's called the twelve to do, we can do. God has given us power and authority to act in his name. He just wants us to believe it. Again, it's not based on your looks, your sex, your age, your education, or whatever. Nationality. None of those, charisma, none of those things mean nothing to God. He's just looking for someone to believe that you can use his name. Quiet in the church this morning. It's quiet. We can use his name because he's given us his name and he's given us his authority. Pastor, what does that have to do with an anointing service? It has everything to do with it. Because the need for those 12 disciples back then is the same need that we have today. Power and authority to act in His name. Power over unclean spirits, which are demons. Cast out demons out of people. People being tormented internally and outside of being oppressed. To tell them, to break their hold or their resting place upon that person. To break their hold upon people's lives that you cannot torment that person any, anymore. And of course, the person then is faced with this very important, life-changing question. Do you believe that I am the Son of God and that you need me in your life? That's the question. Because a lot of people want relief from demons. A lot of people want to be touched by Jesus. But a lot of people don't want to follow him. That's why demons come back when seven times more worse. is because they got touched by God, but they didn't surrender their heart to God for him being Lord of their lives. That's what happened. Church, put yourself into this promise. He said in verse 7, go preach this message. Go preach, look at verse 7, the kingdom of God is at hand. What basically Jesus is saying to, to the 12, and he's saying to us, the kingdom of God is now. It's right here. It's right now. The kingdom is here. I don't see it. No, because Jesus said, for those who would believe, the kingdom of God is within you. Where is the kingdom of God? Point to this right here. Point to this up here. It's here and it's here. That's where the kingdom is. And so the message that I'm proclaiming to you, the kingdom of God is here. And then God allows us to do stuff as he leads us by the Spirit. Well, I've got this, I, you know, I need help. I'm, I'm sick in my head. I'm, I'm loaded on drugs. I'm, I can't stop doing this one thing or I'm just so bruised or broken or whatever. I got problems. You know what? People have problems. All people have problems. But listen, we need to stop telling people have problems. They have sin. If we tell people that the, the kingdom of God is here, the message of the kingdom is here, God will take care of your sin. He'll take care of your problem. Hallelujah, I like that. And by us saying that the kingdom of God is here, it's at hand, basically we're saying it's the kingdom 
of God, the gospel of good news is here. I've got new good news for you. I've got good news is what you preach. That Christ Jesus came to save sinners. Paul said, who I was the foremost of all sinners. I am the one. I was the sinner. He saved me. He can save you. That's the message of the gospel. The kingdom of God is here now. And so he said in verse 8, you can look at it again. He says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, which are skin diseases, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. What has God given us? Look at that Bible in your lap. This is what he's given us. He's given us his word. He's given us his authority. To act in his name. He's given us precious promises that First Peter talks about. Precious promises that we can be partakers of the divine nature. The divine nature of God is inside of you. Precious promises. He's given us his name. Freely you have been given by God. I look at people in this room and God has given you a lot. Hello. He has blessed you. He has given you. Hey, listen, he's given you truth and revelation. He's given you truth and he's given you revelation. Now, go give it away. Freely you have received. Freely give. Peter and John were going up to pray in the hour of prayer, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's a great time to pray. You're half asleep. And there was a man at the gate, beautiful, begging that Jesus pass by many times. But he left this beggar for lame blame, uh, beggar for James and Peter and uh, John to pray for. Silver and gold I don't have, but what I have I give to you. What I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up. And he did. Right there on the spot. Well, they're apostles, man. They can do that. No. They were believers. They were believers. And that's the thing that we God wants you to understand is that this has not been rescinded. That the works that they did and the work Jesus said we can do we can do if we will seek Him and believe Him and be available to Him. Be available to Him. The next scripture, Carrie, would you put it up? Look at this, this commission that's never been rescinded. Put up Mark 16, verses 14 to 18. Look at verse 14. Later He appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Does that sound like anybody you know? He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. See, they, Jesus was rebuking them because the other disciples and Mary and all the ladies, they had a great testimony of what God did. I don't believe that, a bunch of crazy women. See, a lot of times people miss out on their healing and their blessing because they disqualify the messenger. Hello. They disqualify the messenger. You're just old whatchamacallit. I know you. I went to school with you and I've seen all your mess and your mistakes and everything else and I can't receive from you. And you know what? Jesus rebuked them. He said, you guys have got such a hard heart and you have such unbelief because the ones who did have a testimony of seeing me, where were you guys hiding underneath the table? But those women had faith to go believe and go look at the tomb. Ladies, I should be getting some amens from you. I hope you ladies are going to go to that ladies' advance and I'm telling you, commercial, God's going to do some powerful things. I hope you're going. Let's look at the rest of it. They were corrected because of their unbelief and hard heart. They would not believe the testimony. You know, there will be people sometimes who won't believe your testimony. Don't. Who cares? Give it anyhow. Come on, you ever had that? Maybe you're working. Maybe you're working for the school district. Can I just tell you what the Lord done for me? Ah, oh, that's for you and your church people. This is what God did in my marriage. This is what God did 
Maybe you're on the job. Maybe you're in the supermarket. Maybe it's your next door neighbor. Let me just tell you what God's done for me. And I'm not ready for that stuff. Christians are hypocrites. Churches are full of hypocrites. You ever, have you ever heard that? Tell them anyway what God's done. Tell them anyway. Because when they get in trouble, they may be calling you up. The commission. They're commissioned. Verse 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow. And these signs will follow. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they'll cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Go preach the gospel, he said to everybody. He who believes from hearing your message will be saved, born again. Those who don't, they will be judged and hell is their place that they choose to live. Let me get this. Let me just say this. It's, it's not your worry when you share the gospel by a testimony and it's rejected. That's not your problem. It's not your, Don't take it as rejection because someone rejects your message. And they might reject you because re really inside they're rejecting the one who sent you. They're rejecting the one who sent you. So don't worry about it. Well, smile. God bless you. Pray for them. Whatever. Don't give up on them because, again, they may, you may be getting a text or a phone call. Hey, could you talk to me? If, you know, you shared with me about God one time. In his name, the authority and the power that is in His name. Authority and power, there it is, church, in His name. Authority and power. Cast out demons. Anybody can. Speak with new tongues, anyone can. Take up serpents, which means the deal. Is it talking about dealing with snakes? You know, those, some of those churches where they'll have snakes down in a, a barrel and you're supposed to pick up the snakes? And it's not, no, he's not talking about that. Many, many saints have died before their time. And even some preachers. I'm serious. That's not what it's talking about. You say, well, it's literal. Well, look at it again. You're, temp you're tempting God. The Bible says that we are not to tempt the Lord our God. Jesus said to the devil, it's written, you're not supposed to tempt or test God. What it's talking about is handling demonic forces and dealing with them. What about drinking any Deadly things. Well, I believe that could be if someone gives you some bad food or some poison, God can spare your life. But I believe it's also speaking even spiritually of those things that, we, that would touch us, that would be in a sense of you know, getting pretty close to where we live. It's not going to harm us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We can deal with demonic strongholds. We can lay hands on the sick. Look at that. Lay hands on the sick. Speak the name of Jesus to that sickness. And there's a promise there that you need to underline in your Bible. They will recover. They will recover. Does that say anything about healing? And I want to say this to you. This is for everybody. This is for the children. This is for the young people. This is for some of us older folks. This is for everybody. They will recover. They'll speak with tongues. They'll deal with demons. Two words you need to write down and we're going to get ready to pray here in a minute. Two words that Jesus has given you that you need to ask Him for and wait on and believe Him. Here it is. Here's the two words. Power by the Holy Spirit. The word there, power, is dunamis. And you know what dunamis is? It's dynamite. He's given you power by the Holy Spirit and He's given you the authority to act in His name. The authority to act in His name. And I want to say this. It has nothing to do with your self-righteousness of how good you feel about yourself. Whether you've been a good Christian or a bad Christian. 
I just think we need to heed what the Lord said to us earlier prophetically when he said that we need to empty our pockets of everything that weighs us down. Lay aside the sin that does so easily beset you. Run the race that's set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Power by the Holy Spirit. Authority to act in His name. Don't disqualify yourself and say, that can't be me. Lord, don't do what Moses did. God tells Moses, gives him signs and everything else. You know, put your hand in here. And, you know, it, it turns into leper, leprous hand. Pulls it out, puts it back in. Now it's clear. Okay, that rod you've got, throw it on the ground, becomes a snake. He runs from it. Pick it up the tail, it comes back up, snake. God showed him all those signs. And finally Moses said this. You know, Lord, I don't speak too good. Just use somebody else. And the Bible says the anger of the Lord was, he was angry. You know why he was angry? Because Moses was missing his chance. God knows you, how you're made, your personality, your weaknesses, your failures. Your, God knows it all, but he doesn't disqualify you. He chooses you to do the impossible. That's why it's God. It, it, only he can do it. You can't heal nobody. You couldn't heal a fly. You couldn't cast a demon out of a, I was going to say a wall, but anything. You don't have it. It's his name and his authority, his power that does it. Aren't you glad you came to church today? What is God saying to us? Step out in faith to be empowered, to do his command. Step out in faith to be empowered to do his command. Ask the Lord for fresh oil and anointing to refresh you today. Ask the Lord for fresh oil of anointing to refresh you today. And when you do, listen. Boldness, confidence, Holy Spirit, faith, and ability will come upon your life. Boldness, Confidence, Holy Spirit, faith, and ability will come upon your life. So what God wants to do today for your life and your ministry, let me say this, every Christian ought to be involved with some type of ministry. Every Christian ought to be doing something. Every Christian ought to have a local church. Every Christian ought to be serving. Every Christian should be involved. They should be serving. They should be giving. They should be faithful because that's the Sabbath day. I have a message I'm going to be sharing sometime this year about really what is the Sabbath and why we need to honor it. But I think a lot of Christians don't understand how important it is to honor the Lord in the Sabbath. The key here is will you, be, will you believe and will you make yourself available? It's not complicated, is it? Will you believe that what God's Word says to you today that you're available and you're hungry for it. And you're ready. Oh, pastor, they prayed for me before and I don't change. Well, maybe you need to guard that good deposit that's been put inside of you and not let it go. You know, if someone gave me $1,000 and I took it to the bank and there were some robbers that are planning on blowing up the bank and taking my $1,000, I tell you what, I'd have my Glock. <coughs> And I do have one. And I say, that's mine. You need to guard what God's given you. You need to guard what God's given you because the devil's after it. He's after your seed. If you haven't been here for a few weeks, I tell you, get on the uh, internet or phone or whatever you've got and you need to listen to these sermons that have been shared this month. Powerful stuff. So are you available? Are you hungry for more of what God wants to do? Will you sh shove down and stomp on it that thought in your head that tells you that I'm not qualified, I'm not worthy enough? Baloney. You needed to tell the devil baloney. Because I know what God's Word says. I know who I belong to. I am a believer. And if I'm a believer, I'm going to be a receiver. Some of you need a fresh touch 
because you battle with unbelief. Some of you need to take these scriptures that I've given you this morning and read them every day to yourself to build your faith up. You know, God meets us where our faith is now. Our faith level could be very low. But I tell you what, you get that engine going. You get that engine going on those tracks and you start believing God's word and you begin to confess God's word. I tell you what, pretty soon faith is going to begin to rise up within you. And God will bring situations into your life. And because you have been with Jesus, that word of faith will rise up within you and say, in the name of Jesus, be healed in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, devil, I take authority over you to quit tormenting that person now. In the name of Jesus, I believe you can speak with new tongues, which is a gift from the Holy Spirit for intercession and prayer. Hallelujah. Well, are you ready? Are you ready? Did you hear the word of God this morning? Did it put faith in you? I don't think that has worked yet. Did you hearing the word of God put faith in you? Now, are you going to act on what you heard? Are you going to guard what you've heard? Is that what you've heard today? Is it for you? Amen. So what I want to do is uh, put up seven gray chairs right next to each other if we would. Andy, you, and maybe uh, Eric, Nick. Just put seven chairs over there and what you're going to do is you're going to come sit down and we need to go get, uh, well, Glenn is here, Carol is here. I'd like to get Mike and Maria so they can bring the young people. Just just line up seven. Turn it around with her face in the screen. There you go. Just put seven. Maybe scoot them back. Yeah, Bruce, just make them give a little bit more room. A little more room to in front. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Our God is good. Our God wants to anoint you and equip you for this year for fresh fire to come upon your life. Amen? Let's stand together. Maria, would you play something for me? And what I want to do is we're going to kind of have a, a prayer before we pray for you. And you could be standing here and proxy for someone else. Maybe they're not here today and you're saying, God, I'm standing for my brother and my sister. Maybe it's someone who's out of the area. Maybe it's a family member and saying, God, as I'm anointed with oil, I'm believing the Lord for healing and deliverance for their life. That's the power of faith. That's how it works. That's how it works. Hallelujah. Let's just wait before the Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, touch. Come to heal. Come to deliver. Come and touch your people, Lord. Come with your power, Lord. Come with your power. Come with the authority in the name of Jesus that we use that name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you are going to be fresh, be refreshed in the Holy Spirit. Great joy is going to come upon you. Great joy is going to come. Great confidence. You're going to encounter some things this year. And I want to encourage you to stay connected close to the Lord. So when your time comes to have to deal with things, maybe it's a demonic thing manifesting. You know, that. remember this, the devil's not deaf. You don't have to be anything more than what you are to say in the name of Jesus. You're going to encounter things where you can say, can I pray for your healing? I'm a believer in Jesus and I just want to pray for you right now. Holy Spirit, come right now. Come. God is mobilizing His people. <laughs> yes, Lord. There's a mobilization going on through the body of Christ. Not just at ECC, but the body of Christ. For the church to rise up this is the hour of His power. 
that we will defeat strongholds. We will see strongholds broken over people's lives, even whole families. We declare over Elsinore Christian Center the year of increase. Listen, I can't reach them. God has not called me to reach these people. He's called you to reach them. He's called you to share your testimony. He's called you to invite people to church. Even people that are hurting in marriages, situations, say, you know what? Why don't you come to church with me? We're a people of prayer and we believe that Jesus will touch them. And they'll come because they're desperate. And you're praying for them. Pray for your neighbor, that co-worker. Pray for them. Hallelujah. The hour of your power, Lord. The hour of your power. So believe for yourself today. If you've got a physical need, believe. In Jesus' name. Do we have uh, Mike and Maria and the young people yet? Are they over here? Are they coming? Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Like for you.